Aloha and welcome to Hawaii Together on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute and your host for this program. Well, if you're like me, you're probably at home now, locked down in response to the coronavirus pandemic. And while that's the response of our government to institute lockdowns and use emergency powers, there are a lot of people who aren't happy with it. For one thing, it's also shut down the capacity to do business and many businesses, including the tourist industry, have just gone under. Uh, it's a terrible thing taking place in terms of the impact or unintended consequences of these lockdowns. But today I've got two attorneys who are gonna talk a bit about the legality of these lockdowns and whether they can be challenged. My guests today are Mark Victor and Jody Broadus of Attorneys for Freedom with offices in Honolulu and Las Vegas. Uh, but we've got breaking news. I was gonna talk to, with them about a case that they're running in terms of fighting against lockdowns in Hawaii. But as it turns out, Pennsylvania has acted today and we've, we're gonna take a look right at that at the top. But first, let me welcome Mark. Mark, welcome to the program. Tell me a little bit about your firm and also introduce Jody to us. Well, thank you, Kali'i. It's a real honor to be on your program here today. And so I'm appearing with uh, one of the partners of our law firm here, Attorneys for Freedom. This is Jody Broadus. And uh, Jody uh, is very involved in all of the civil cases at our firm. And so I wanted to ask her to appear with me today. And so our law firm is uh, really different from every other law firm because we're a group of activists. We're freedom activists. I think that Attorneys for Freedom is not just a name. It should mean something. And what it means to us is that every attorney who is employed by this firm is really a freedom activist, which basically means that we like a free market economics, we like a free economy, and we also uh, feel very strongly about protecting civil liberties, basically the rights of people to live peacefully however they choose, as long as they're not bothering other people. And because we're activists and uh, we are proud to be in Honolulu, uh, we're very interested and energized to do what we can to really try to improve the state of Hawaii. Well, Jody, I'd like to welcome you as well to the program, and uh, I hope you'll get to visit us soon here in Hawaii, especially once the quarantine is lifted. Oh, I hope so too. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Well, thanks for being here. Let's just jump right into it. Uh, I said there was breaking news today from Pennsylvania. Well, what do you both think about the decision handed down today by a Pennsylvania district court judge uh, it's one in which he found that stay-at-home orders and caps on group sizes were unconstitutional. Mark? Well, you know, uh, Kali, this is the decision I wish we had received initially in, uh, in the Honolulu Federal District Court. Uh, but this was a case, if you recall, our law firm was the first to bring a federal challenge in Honolulu. We went to the federal court. And then, basically, for strategy reasons, after a different firm brought a lawsuit, we withdrew. Our, our plaintiffs decided they wanted to withdraw the suit. So we didn't get to argue that case, but the other firm uh, from the mainland argued that case and really uh, got what I would call a terrible decision uh, from the judge in that case. It's almost a, the polar opposite type of a decision that they got in Pennsylvania. The judge in Pennsylvania uh, did something close to, I think what I would have done if I was the judge there, the judge basically, if I had to put this in a one-liner, it would be this. Uh, emergencies do not suspend constitutional rights. And so that's been really the feeling across the country, at least in <clears> my <throat> opinion, uh, by a lot of people wearing black robes. It's been, look, there's an emergency. And so all these great protections uh, and things that we have in our constitution that the founding fathers and framers of the constitution put out there, that stuff doesn't matter anymore because we're in an emergency. But I think that this judge uh, in Pennsylvania basically gave a little bit of lip service to that saying, look, at the beginning, and I, I feel the same way, at the beginning, we don't know exactly what's going on, right? And so you have to give a little bit of deference. But now, uh, here we are in September, we've got a lot more information right. about what's happened, what the, what the sort of uh, the, the kill rate is on this virus and how many people get ill and who's really vulnerable and who's not. And so things have to change. We cannot get lulled in to this endless idea that uh, governors can just continually keep issuing and reissuing these proclamations that fly in the face of everything about American jurisprudence, 
Our separation of powers is out the window. And in essence, we got one person now both making laws and enforcing laws and continuing to just go on and on until if the day ever comes that the governor decides that the emergency no longer exists. This is an untenable position. So I really laud, uh, I, I really cheer on and I am very, um, really happy to read the decision from, the, from Pennsylvania. I think, I'm sure it's gonna be appealed. And so I hope the court, the uh, judges on the court of appeals feel the same way. Well, I like what you said. Emergencies do not suspend constitutional rights. That's something that should be inscribed on a monument in Washington, D.C., of all places. But uh, I'd like to ask Jody a little bit more about Pennsylvania case. I know you've just finished reading it. The, the Pennsylvania judge also ruled against the closure of non-life sustaining businesses and wrote about the right to earn a living. That was remarkable. Absolutely. <laughs> Do you think this offers any hope to Hawaii businesses that have been shuttered by the emergency orders? And, and by the way, I mean, there's not a day that goes by here that we don't learn of another dozen businesses that have been shut down in which uh, they just can't operate and function or even get started up again. No, you're absolutely correct. And I think the, the judge in the Pennsylvania case did an excellent job of presenting the constitutional issues, not just saying there's an emergency and you can turn a blind eye. And with the businesses, people have a right to earn a business. And the court was cognizant of that. <clears throat> Another thing with, that the court did is it really kind of did a good job of opening up that you can't just say, you, people can do certain things, but not certain things when it's the same issue. For example, you can't tell people not to go to the grocery store, but you can let them go to church. The exposure is still the same. So I think that opens up the door for the businesses, and, and especially in Hawaii, who have been I mean, devastated by this. And they, you know, there, there's a lot of different ways to look at this, but I think the strong one is, is you have these constitu constitutional protections that are just being cast away. And I think that's the problem that we've had so far with dealing with the courts and the governor in Hawaii is that we're throwing away all personal liberties because we decide, we're the parent, we're gonna decide what's best for you regardless of whether you've been exposed to it, regardless of whether you have anything it's just, it's an overall overreaching global uh, type of, of restriction that has no limitation. Terrible. It's as if we're creating a government that is our parent rather than uh, the servant of the people. You know, um, one of the big items in the Pennsylvania case was the fact that the emergency responses seemed uh, to be primed to go on indefinitely forever. Uh, the, the judge in the case said that the Constitution cannot accept a quote unquote new normal that allows for the infringement of basic liberties. Uh, what do you think uh, that do you think that the fact that the lockdown has no end in sight changes the legal situation that we were in back in March at the beginning of the lockdowns? I Mark? think that. Sorry, go ahead, Mark. I think it dramatically changes things, right? I mean, I think everybody, or not everybody, but most people understand that, look, when we're, when we're looking at the TV and there's a, something new coming, there's a new virus, it's novel, we don't know how it works and we see it's coming and people are dying, okay, fine. Most people say, look, we gotta, we gotta be reasonable, we gotta take some precautions. But so much time has passed now and we have a lot of evidence that this isn't gonna destroy the human race. We know how to deal with this virus and the government, like governments generally are, they're not responsive, they don't change. What happened in Hawaii was wise in our statutes. They say, look, emergencies happen. The governor is hereby granted 60 days to declare an emergency and to get things done. That makes sense, Kali'i, because 60 days is enough time to get the legislature together. They are the professional lawmakers and they should act and they haven't acted in Hawaii. And so it's not appropriate for the governor to continually act really as a one man iron fisted dictator. I think that what's critically important in this case is the, the uh, judge really looked at this case that was decided by the United States Supreme Court in 1905. This case has been repeatedly cited. It was also cited in the case that was decided in the, in the district court in Honolulu, this case out of Massachusetts, it deals with the smallpox and the question of whether Massachusetts could forcefully get people to uh, force them to take the vaccine. And so 
But this is a completely different time. Our courts have completely changed how they deal with constitutional issues. We now have tiered levels of scrutiny. This judge was aware of that. The judge also said, look, the 1905 case, it doesn't give carte blanche for states to do whatever they want. But I got to tell you, Kali'i, this is a problem we're going to have to address going down the road because uh, so many people in the freedom world say, look, states' rights, states' rights. We want the federal government to curtail what they're doing because the power rests in the state. And that's great when the federal government is acting in excess of its authority. But when the state government is acting in its authority, we've got to find a way to curtail this almost unlimited grant of police powers, this right to regulate health, welfare, safety, and morals. There's just not really a limit on it. And so we need to do something and we need to think long-term. We're gonna get past this. This is gonna happen in Hawaii, just like it's happened everywhere else. It's gonna be a few months where lots of cases will happen. And then as more people get it and develop immunity to it, it will wane like it has everywhere else. The question is, are we going to learn from this and change how we do business in Hawaii? That's the big issue going forward. Well, Mark, that's certainly one of your goals now. And I'm going to ask Jody in the next two minutes before we go to the break, introduce to us the suit that you guys are bringing here in Hawaii against the governor's proclamation. What's that about? Just in a couple minutes. Sure. It's, it's a lawsuit that we've brought on behalf of a group called For Our Rights. It has several individuals and we're asserting uh, various constitutionally based claims. And the main one, the, the primary one that we really are focusing on initially is the governor's authority to issue a 60 day proclamation. However, that's all it allows. And as Mark addressed earlier, what that 60 days allows is legislature to come in and make rules and make laws if it wants to. You know, the government by the people, through the people. And what has happened is the governor just keeps extending orders and creating law. And basically, as Mark said, it's created a dictatorship. So the lawsuit is addressing that specific issue. It also talks about the uh, impact on the, the fundamental right to travel, not only to the states or to the different areas, but between islands. Everything is restricted. Um, you have quarantines in place, also restricting people from movement. Um, even though they haven't been infected. And actually, one thing that's really interesting that, that is a correlative to the Pennsylvania suit, the Pennsylvania suit talked about the quarantine and how it's defined under Pennsylvania law. Hawaii law defines it the same way. A quarantine applies when someone is affected or has been exposed. And we don't have that here. Everyone is being quarantined without having the Hawaii's own statutory application of what quarantine is for. So I think that those things will really help us out in, in going forward. Very good. So when we come back from a break, we're going to hear more about this suit. Hopefully, you'll tell us a bit about the plaintiffs and how the, the suit will proceed, and we'll get into some of the nuts and bolts. I'm Kelee Akina on Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Together. We'll be right back in just a moment with Attorneys for Freedom. Don't go away. Aloha, I'm Lillian Kumi, host of Lillian's Vegan World, the show where we talk about veganism and the plant-based diet located in Honolulu, Hawaii. I'm a vegan chef and cooking instructor, and I have lots of uh, information to share with you about how awesome this plant-based diet is. So do tune in every second Thursday from 1 p.m. Aloha.
Thanks for sticking around here on Think Tech Together, Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Together, and I'm Kili'i Akina. My guest today is Mark Victor and Judy Broadus. They are both attorneys at Attorneys for Freedom, talking about a suit that they're bringing against the governor's proclamation on shutdowns. Let's go to Judy first. Tell us a little bit about the plaintiffs and how this suit came about. Sure. There's a group called For Our Rights, and they are a uh, uh, they're based in Kauai, and they're all, they all live there, and they're all feeling this, this really strong impact from the governor's uh, proclamations. Um, they're a bunch of individuals. They're, they're business people. They're family people. They're uh, locals. They are, uh, they're every type. They, they represent all different types of people, just like on any other part of the, any of the islands. They have experienced the same things that other people on the islands have felt. Isolation, anxiety, fear, loss of family support. You can't travel, you can't see people. Uh, their businesses have been completely devastated. They can't earn a living. They're losing all sorts of ways. They're, sitting, they're getting behind on mortgages. They're, they're losing their right to be able to just live. And they've been so strongly impacted, they felt a need to come forward and try and, and have a way to, to challenge this proclama these proclamations and, and be able to have a life again. How do you plan to go forward in the, the suit? What's the basic strategic direction? Uh, I don't want you to give away anything that might disadvantage you in court, but what, what you can tell us at this place, at this point? Well, lit litigation, especially civil litigation, can go on for a long period of time, even years. And so our goal is to expedite that in this case. And we have several different causes of action. And what we'd like to do is get some of the initial ones up right in front of the judge immediately. And the main one we want to do is want to file a motion to have the court immediately address the 60-day proclamation and the governor's authority to keep continuing those. We want to get at something in front of the judge. It's uh, more legally based, not a lot of factual issues on that. It's based out of the Constitution and the laws of the of, uh, the state. So it should be something that can be brought up immediately without having to go in extensive discovery and extensive types of, of, of uh, areas that normally distract from getting something in front of a judge quickly. So our goal is to get these this initial uh, issue before the judge. And if the judge rules on that, that's a huge win because it takes away these pro proclamations and allows the people of Hawaii and the businesses to to go on living and start trying to mend all the all the uh, horrible things that have happened and the experiences they've had in trying to get life to some semblance of normalcy. What do you hope to accomplish in the long run? Uh, will, if the suit is successful, will it end all of the emergency rules, including the county and city rules? Uh, generally, yes, um, it will. It will do that because it's going to be constitutionally based. And because those arguments are constitutionally based towards the governor and the state's authority, it's also going to apply to the local levels. Now, some of your critics say that emergency proclamations are legal because they don't really infringe on constitutional rights. Mark, what do you say to that? Could you imagine, Kaylee, uh, the argument that uh, being required to stay home, to be imprisoned in your own home, doesn't violate your constitutional rights? I mean, this is such an upside down understanding of anything about constitutional rights. Basically, your right to do virtually everything is curtailed right now in the state of Hawaii. So of course it affects virtually every constitutional right that you have is being dramatically infringed and in, not just infringed, but curtailed and completely taken away. So, I mean, to me, it's not even a serious argument to say that your constitutional rights are not being infringed right now. Of course they are. You know, one of our biggest concerns at the Grassroot Institute when the governor began to exercise his emergency powers is that he curtailed the state's sunshine and open records laws. That was one of the first things that he did and in an unprecedented way that we don't see anywhere else across the country. A uh, couple questions, is your suit going to touch on that at all? And whether your suit touches on it at all, what are your thoughts about it? You know, our suit does not touch on that. And the reason it doesn't is we don't have plaintiffs that wanted to bring those claims. We would love to bring those claims. I think they're very serious claims. I think this is exactly the kind of creeping uh, tyranny, right? This is exactly 
what our founding fathers were worried about, the creep towards tyranny. And so if, and they even warned about this, if we do not remain eternally vigilant, we don't deserve to live in a free society. This is on us. We all need to look in the mirror and say, we brought this about. We put these politicians in office. We've allowed these laws to be on the books. We have created the stage that has allowed Hawaii, which in a shamefully horrible way to be listed as the 49th freest state in America, the Aloha state, which should be the freest state in the nation, is the 49th free estate, and it's our fault. We need to learn from this. We're going to get past it, but we need to learn from it, and we need to move forward in a way, if we're really serious about freedom and liberty and protecting the rights of people to live how they choose, all people, no matter what color your skin is, no matter where you were born, no matter what language you speak, if we're really serious about being the Aloha state, we need to start walking the walk and not just talking the talk. And that's the long-term plan that we're going to be pushing at our law firm for the state of Hawaii. Jody, what limits would you like to see on the governor's emergency powers as a result of the success of your suit? Well, first of all, it, there's the 60-day limit, and that, that is what is allowed. So I'd like to see that enforced, is that the governor has no more than 60 days. He can't continue these uh, proclamations out under the guise that he's just allowed to do so because he wants to. So our first and our, our, our primary issue that we need to deal with is stopping the governor from continuing to police all the people and run a dictatorship under how he wants to do it without looking at the people, without uh, taking into consideration there's constitutional uh, implications that are going on here. Uh, so I think that's the primary thing we wanna see is we wanna see the governor take back and stop these proclamations. They are, they're not authorized under the law and they shouldn't be. He's, got, he's already exceeded his, his authority in so many different ways. And it's just detrimentally impacts so many different people that we need to get back as Mark said to this free society. And I think the first step is to uh, restrain the governor's authority to what it actually is. Very good. Well, as we reach the end of our program, let's shift away from litigation and talk about other ways we can bring about change in the government. And I know, Mark, uh, you have an in innovative idea. You've made an offer to the governor, or you will be making an offer to the governor that could be a win-win solution, a, a participation between government and the private sector. Well, that's right, Kaylee. Uh, last week, we uh, sent a very detailed letter directly to the governor, and we said, look, uh, we've, we've seen now that there's no way to keep coronavirus out of anywhere. It's, it's, it's crept its way into every nook and cranny of our planet. It's part of the environment we live in now. Maybe it's been delayed, but it is here now in Hawaii. And it's going to stay there until enough people get it, and then they generate these antibodies in their system. How long they last, we don't know, but we know that people have them after they get them. So Hawaii, being the gem of the world, is in a wonderful position right now. And I've spoken with leaders in the private sector, because I like private sector solutions, voluntary solutions. So the private sector has said, look, Mark, if the governor says we will invite people to the state of Hawaii who can prove they are positive for those vital antibodies, we'll invite them to come to Hawaii Let's let the private sector give them an incentive, maybe 30, 40, or even 50% discounts for people who come to Hawaii. Maybe they have to give that all important convalescent plasma. This will definitely flatten the curve in Hawaii better than anything else that's happened. It will protect the people in Hawaii with herd immunity who are now just sitting ducks because they've been sort of insulated from the rest of the world. It will give the convalescent plasma to help treat the people who actually get it. And it will definitely immediately open up the economy and save those businesses who are so mightily struggling to just stay in business. It's a win, win, win all the way around. It's even a win for the people who have recovered from Corona, who now maybe even for the first time can come to Hawaii at a tremendous discount. All we need is for the governor to say, this makes sense, let's invite people. We gotta put up a website, let them prove that they're positive for antibodies. Let them get a receipt saying they've given the plasma. 
walk into the resort that are, that are listed on the website that say, we'll give you a discount and everybody's happy. And this can serve as a model for the rest of the world going forward and how to deal with the pandemic. But I haven't heard anything back yet. I'm gonna give the governor some more time. I am proceeding right now on the understanding that I think the governor may very well have been acting in good faith the entire time. I don't have any reason to think that he's not acting with good intentions in mind. But here's a solution that I think is a bit out of the box, but it's a pro-market, pro-freedom solution that'll get Hawaii opened up immediately. And so we'll see what the, uh, what the governor has to say. I'm happy to send you a copy of the letter with the attachments and you can list it there and people can look at it and read it. And if they think this makes sense, let them get a hold of the governor and say, hey, governor, it's time to do something proactive instead of sitting and hiding from the coronavirus. Let's confront it head on and let's work together with our fellow brothers and sisters who have already gotten it and recovered from it to help mutually each other. You know, many people in Hawaii, unfortunately, are very skeptical of the idea of the free market. They're prejudiced against it, thinking it equates to Gordon Gecko uh, and his greed is good motto. But Jody, let me ask you this as a closing comment, if you'd make. What is it that motivates the private sector to institute the kind of solution that Mark talked about? What's in it for the private sector to make it, in, to incentivize their support of it? Well, number one is they'd be able to open immediately and start generating income, getting a living, being able to provide for their families, uh, saving their homes, uh, building that free life that they wanna have. So I think that the, the initial thing for the private sector is, hey, we get to go forward. We get to do what we want to do at this point. Governor's going to open up the society. We can decide how we want to do that. Um, there's a lot, lot of way. Like a lot of people are, are are stuck at home right now. They're not able to travel. This incentivizes them to travel to come to Hawaii. It's an invitation. It's going to increase the tourism um, and help a lot of these businesses that focus on tourism. It'll also allow the businesses that aren't involved in tourism still allows them to open and, and get back to what they were doing before this whole pandemic ruined their lives. So I think that there's a lot of positive things for the private sector uh, in getting the government to open as soon as possible and get these proclamations thrown out. And I think that this uh, letter that was sent to the governor is an excellent idea on pushing forward to get to that resolution. Jody, thank you for being with us today. And Mark, yeah. Mark, thank you so much for being with us. This has been very enlightening. My guests today have been Mark Victor and Jody Broadus of Free Attorneys for Freedom. And uh, you can learn more about them real quickly at their website. Mark, what is that, your website? Real simple, just go to Attorneys for Freedom, all spelled out, attorneysforfreedom.com. We'd love to hear from you, whether you agree or disagree. We're all Americans, let's talk civilly and, and let's all figure it out together. Great, and until next time, I'm Kili'i Akina, President of Grassroot Institute on the ThinkTech Hawaii Broadcast Network for Hawaii Together. Aloha.